One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of these Nigerian men whose images appear here are on the cybercrime most wanted list of the FBI. Yes, you heard right. Their pictures, names and details are on display on the FBI website and they are wanted for their alleged involvement in the business email compromise BEC scheme that defrauded 70 businesses and individuals in the United States in combined losses of $6 million. BEC is a type of scam targeting commercial, government or non-profit organizations who conduct wire transfers. So usually the BEC attackers impersonate the CEO or any executive authorized to do wire transfers. So now let's examine the wanted men one after the other. Richard Izuchuku Uzu, born in Nigeria in 1986, is wanted for his alleged involvement in a business email compromise, BEC scheme. Alex Afolabi Ogunshaki, born in 1983, allegedly provided bank accounts to Richard Izuchuku Uzu and other co-conspirators. Felix Osilama Okpo was born in 1989. He allegedly provided hundreds of bank accounts to Richard Izuchuku Uzu and other co-conspirators. Bank accounts that Okpo allegedly provided to Uzu received fraudulent wire transfers from victim businesses totaling over 1 million US dollars. Abiola Ayorinde Kayode, also known as ABK, also known as Jinja, is 33. He allegedly provided bank accounts to others on the wanted list. Accounts he provided were used to receive fraudulent wire transfers. Kayode also allegedly conducted BEC and romance fraud scheme himself. Namdi Osin Benson, age 33 allegedly provided bank accounts to Richard Izuchuku Uzu that were used to receive fraudulent wire transfers. Benson also allegedly conducted romance fraud and advanced fee fraud scheme himself. Ayomide Michael Olorunyomi, also known as Ayo, also known as AY, he allegedly conducted romance fraud schemes often targeting vulnerable elders or widows. He allegedly defrauded several victims out of more than 1 million US dollars. Additionally, he provided the bank account of his victims to other co-conspirators to be used to receive fraudulent wire transfers. It is interesting to note that all six men currently reside in Nigeria according to the FBI, but have been indicted in the United States District Court, District of Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska, on charges of conspiracy to commit wire fraud a federal warrant has been issued for their arrest and they are a flight risk. Interpol, FBI and other cybercrime busting agencies have recently stepped up their search for fraudsters using business email compromise to defraud individuals and companies. Hush Puppy, a social media sensation who shows off luxury cars and fashion accessories on social media, was recently arrested in his base in Dubai. It has been alleged he used BEC to defraud government and businesses around the world millions of dollars. 32-year-old Obiwane Okeke, also known as Invictus Obi, arrested in 2019 in the US for wire fraud, has pleaded guilty. He defrauded his victims about $11 million. Okeke was once celebrated as one of Africa's youngest entrepreneurs by Forbes Africa magazine. Just last August, FBI released the names of 77 Nigerians involved in what was described as the largest fraud in U.S. history. Now add the six to the list. The actions of these few fraudsters put Nigeria and Nigerians in a bad light on the global map of integrity, denting the country's already fragile image in the Committee of Nations. These cyber frauds discourage foreign investment in the country. The licit activities of this few might hamper the efforts of the country's young entrepreneurs who are seeking seed investors and venture capitalists for their projects or looking to get jobs outside the shores of Nigeria. There have been reported cases where those seeking visas to travel abroad for legitimate business interests were denied. Although the Nigerian government is trying to combat cybercrime, there needs to be a more concerted effort by the government and the country's security agencies to slow the growing trend.
EFCC often publicizes the arrest of cyber criminals almost daily, but what becomes of these suspected fraudsters after their parade? What becomes of assets like smartphones, laptops, landed assets and exotic cars seized from them? What is the plan to dissuade more young men and women from going into cyber crimes? What plans does the government have to ameliorate the prevailing economic conditions in the country, foiling unemployment and the quest for sudden wealth? Until these questions are answered and appropriate measures put in place to curb cybercrime, we may just be watching more and more young Nigerians make it to the wanted list of the FBI, Interpol and the EFCC.